Welcome back to Oathbound Gaming. Today we're going to be taking a look at a game called Kilta. It is an interesting game. It's different. It's not something you see a lot of. Because it is a semi-idle game, is the way I'm going to call it. Semi-idle auto-battler. I gotta make up my own genre a little bit for this one because it doesn't really fall into the idle type of games where you just hit play and you leave it running all night and you come back, oh, look, I have a million gold. It's not like that. And we're gonna take a deep dive into Kilta. And at the end of this video, we're gonna do a pros, cons, and final thoughts. So first thing I'm gonna show you real quick is it's got a somewhat roguelite elements. And I know the developers are working on expanding those elements to make future runs even more different and reward players for continuing to play so progress here is going to show our high score uh it doesn't really matter if you're not into high score that's okay if you don't want to chase the high score try to get the highest you can get there's challenges to complete there's a list of your challenges there i'm hoping in the future that we see like rewards for each challenge that you complete in addition to that there's the dialogues you've seen and the characters are pretty Pretty cool, they interact with each other depending on who's part of your guild. And then you unlock new skills. Right now there's only six in the game, and we started with four. We're gonna go ahead and hit new game. New game, here's our four skills. These are skills that you, uh, how do I say this? You have to actively use them in the battle yourself. It's not, an, it's not up to the idle portion of the game to initiate. That's on you, that's on you the player. Semi-idle, right? So. We get to choose one defense, one offense, one special. Right now, since we only have one of each, excluding the defense, which has two, we can choose between these. These are heals. These are obviously your offensive stuff. We can stun a unit, which is cool. And we have a cursed idol, which is... I like the special one a lot. So, afflicted, afflicted targeted enemy with idols cursed. Each hit against the inflicted enemy deals 25% increased damage and heals the attacker for 40% 40, 40 of the damage done. Effect lasts for eight hits. That's pretty good. It's pretty strong. I like that. Um, starting heroes, that's going to be implemented in the future. And then our difficulty modifiers. If we want the game to be harder, let's take a look at this one. A single hero getting incapacitated during a battle results in a game over. Heroes also take double the amount of hard damage during battles. <sighs> Damn. That's, that sounds tough. We're going to leave it on normal for now, but as you guys can see, you have quite a, quite a bit of modifiers that you can uh, throw in there if you want to up your score. So, starting the game out, we're going to say, yeah, we want to be a guild master. We're a guild master of a guild called Kilta. And our goal is to become the best. Become the best guild. How do I know that that is our goal? Because of that right there. Become guild. The twin continents. Become the best guild. That's right. So I play a lot of MMOs, all right? You guys will see a lot of MMO content on this channel. So I, I know... I know that feeling. Become the best guild. I've been there before. And, um, I love it. I'm motivated, alright? This game's got me motivated to be the best guild. So, the characters in the game are, like I said before, they're, they're interesting characters. They interact with each other. They, depending on who you get to join your guild, because there's more characters you can pick up than just the ones you start. But I'm not going to spoil the story for you. We're going to go ahead and skip the intro. So we can get started here and I can show you guys exactly how it works. So we have an inventory here and we have two characters that we started out with. And we can have a party of five, but we'll get more reserve heroes. We'll have more than five and we can have them sit on the bench and heal in between battles. We're going to go ahead and throw some armor on our units so they stay alive. And we're going to pick some weapons to throw on them because we want them to be a little stronger, right? The two characters we start off with is Americus, I hope I'm saying his name right, and Velia. They have auto attacks, each character always has an auto attack, and then they have an ability down at the bottom. The abilities are also initiated automatically, so you don't have to actually initiate those. Now I'm going to show you something. Um, before we start that quest, take a look at the bot right box, Blacksmith. We can put three items in there and click Reforge, and we can get a better item. So they forged into a Hefty Hammer, which is quite strong. I'm going to go ahead and throw that on, throw that on her, because she's a little weaker. I don't want her to die. She gets a little bit more health by throwing that on. That's good. So we're going to go ahead and go to our quest, and we're going to fight our first battle. Now, I'm going to warn you, this one's going to be pretty quick because there's only one enemy, but the fights get a lot longer. So we're going to go ahead and confirm, and I'm going to try to talk somewhat quickly so I can explain exactly what's going on. Here we go. So, to first start, before the battle begins, 
We have a grid here on the left where we can choose where we want our units to be placed. They are more likely to be attacked if they're in the front. So you place your tanky characters in the front and your, your less tanky characters towards the middle and, and rear. Right? We don't want them to get hit. We don't want our healers to be smacked around. We want our tanky boys. We want them to block for our weaker units. Now we're going to begin. Ready? It's going to be pretty quick. So, this white bar here is our auto attack bar. And you'll see an enemy has it as well. Every time that fills up, they're going to take a turn. Now, this blue bar here is their ability bar. That's the, that's the ability right there that Americus can use. And Velia is going to use hers now. And that blue bar fills up every time they take it a turn. When the next turn comes up with the blue bar already filled, they will initiate their ability instead of a basic auto attack. So you don't have to do anything for that. At the end, we got ourselves a nice item, or two items, Average Sword and Worn Wand. And then, some dialogue. You won't always get dialogue, we'll skip that. But in addition to that, there we go. We get to pick one of these two units. Now, you don't have to worry about these units never coming up again, because I've seen units that I chose not to take come up later. We're going to go ahead and go with uh, Ko here. He is a healer type. Now, we get to pick between one of two abilities for them. Now, the character will always be the same, except for those abilities. So you need to make a mindful decision on what you want that unit to do. So this first unit, um, Ko's unit... I'm sorry, Ko, the first ability for him is Cycle of Life. Cycle of Life is, here we go, he strikes an enemy for 110% of his physical power. The party member with the lowest percentage of health remaining is then healed by an amount determined by the damage dealt and Ko's magical power. Pretty good, right? Hits the enemy pretty strong, attack, and then heals the lowest health unit. Or, he can heal everyone. That's the one I'm going to go with. Because as your party gets larger, that is pretty good. You want him to be able to throw out some good heals. We're going to throw a wand on him, which ups his magical power and his speed, because we want him to attack more. And the more attacks he does, the more abilities he can charge and, and use, right? So we want him to use that. We don't have any armor, unfortunately, but we do have a nice sword that we can throw on Americus. And we're going to go to quest. Now, one thing you'll notice is Americus's HP is not maxed. 133 out of 135. Same thing over here with Velia. 95 out of 98. You can increase their HP by letting them rest at the bottom. We don't need to worry about that right now. And like I said before, we're going to have more than five characters available. So you can always say, hey, let these two rest. Let's put the other two in there and kind of rotate them around a little bit. Now, we have three quests to choose from this time. But one quick thing I wanted to show you guys on the right side. Bonus objective expires today. Win a battle with every party member fully equipped. Unfortunately, I can't pull that off because he doesn't have a uh an armor uh, an equipment slot that's okay though it'll expire and other ones will come up so you'll get bonus objectives that kind of roll randomly on what the requirements are and what the buff is super cool i love that type of randomized um elements in roguelike games which uh, that's what makes a roguelite a roguelite right so you need that now we have to pick between one of three quests we can only take one of them and we want to look at the rewards here item rewards we can pick two Stunning blow. Take a look at this one. So we get a reduction in speed, but we up our power, our health, and it's got a passive chance to stun an enemy. 25% chance. That's great, right? Let's choose this one. Agitated Snakes. So, like I said before, the battles are definitely going to get a lot longer than the first one. We're going to put our healer dude. We'll put him in the back like that. Sometimes you don't want to line all your units up because units can do attacks that go through they they do a line attack they go through the front line and hit the rear so you want to be careful of that so we should be okay with these guys and we could you know be mindful of their abilities and ins inspect them before we actually start the fight we can say hey deadly venom it's going to attack us what is it going to do it's going to poison our units so you know exactly what they're going to throw at you and you should adjust accordingly now before we do this battle i'm going to show you one thing which i don't really understand too well I guess I understand it, but it's a little strange. So, positional effects at the top left. You'll see full rank middle, because everyone's in the middle. That's a 7.5% speed buff, but a minus 5% defense for my units. I thought that was a little strange, that there's a buff and a negative effect as well. And I don't know really how I feel about it. I just think it's kind of it's kind of strange 
because what's the what's the reasoning? Why, why is that happening? You know, why do we have a reduced defense now? Because middle and rear rank have reduced defense here, but the front rank has plus defense. I just think it's a little, a little strange. Nothing major. Just um, I'd love to hear the reasoning behind it. What's 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 the idea? But anyway, let's get started. Let's do this. We're gonna do our battle here, and if the battle's a little longer, and you're like, well, this is a little too long for me, you can speed it up. You can go ahead and go a lot faster if you want. But we're gonna slow it down just a little bit here so we can take note of Americus's debuffs. He's got two good debuffs here. And Ko has his ability he's about to use, Surge of Life. He healed him, it went up. But if you take a close look at that bar, you'll see the gray bar represents the persistent hard damage. It can be recovered, replacing hero in reserve for a day. That's back in the uh, in the guild inn, I think you'd call it. We can throw them down at the bottom, and they would be able to heal. I'm going to pick this equipment here because I know he's missing his piece of armor, which we definitely want. And we're going to go... The wielder will deal 200% damage to shielded units. Bonus damage can't exceed the strength of the shield. Interesting. We'll take that. And as you can see, there's dialogue um, choices and interactions that will pop up depending on who's in your, your guild and... Obviously, like I said before, there's characters that interact with each other based off uh, who's in there, you know? There's some characters that don't really quite understand each other, so they kind of butt heads a little bit, I guess. So, it's it's nice to see them play out rather than just a, um, a straight standard story. It's So the next time you go to play, it'll be, it'll be different, right? I got this gem as a reward from that dialogue, making the proper dialogue choices. I was able to get this reward. I did not know that was going to happen. I skipped through it real quick, but that is extremely powerful. That is a very powerful reward. That is a good piece of equipment right there. Um, we're going to go ahead and equip our units here. We did pick up someone named Rufus, and we chose his lifesteal ability. He can lifesteal and heal himself up, which is amazing. Let's do one more, one more battle. Okay, big bad wolf. You'll see this unit here is red. It's got a red box around it. You know it's like an elite, right? That's that's gonna be a tough fight. Little mini boss. He's got some good rewards too. Let's 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 jump into this. Let's uh Okay we confirm that we're gonna go big bad wolf and we're gonna fight him. Now uh that should be fine. That, that's fine. Now one thing I want to show you here is healing potion is now available. We unlock the use of the guildmaster abilities because we we reached like day what is this four? Three or four. You you unlock it eventually. Now, we see Americus is hurting a little bit. We can use this this healing potion ability on him and give him a nice heal so I can actively participate in the fight in a way. Now, I'm going to put this on fast, and I'm going to kick back and let this play out, and hopefully my units kick the crap out of this great hungry hunger wolf. Rufus with the lifesteal. Lily is about to use her ability. Nice. Aggro increase, more likely to be targeted. That's cool. So, Velia's got a attack that when there's a bunch of enemy units, when she attacks with her ability, she, like, kind of marks that target and makes your other units attack that target more often. So you can get a lot of uh, focused DPS. You guys have played MMOs, right? Where everyone's targeting a different unit. It's like, oh, hey, yo, let's take this one down, then this one, then this one. It sucks when they all die at the same time. It's like, wow, we could have... We could have focused it and made it a little easier on ourselves. So I like that. Reduced physical and magical mitigation. She also helps them take more damage. That's good stuff. Ooh, Rufus is hurt. Ah, we made it. We made it. And it's a nice little statistic screen at the end, which personally I think that this can be worked on a little bit and maybe just organized a little bit in, in a nice box where, like, everything's kind of showing, you know? Where, where you don't have to do this. I think it could be cleaned up a little bit, that UI. Hopefully we see that. Oh yeah, let's pick those two. So guys, um, I hope you enjoyed this first look at, uh, at Kilta. I really enjoy this game. I think it's it's pretty unique. I think, oh, Americus is talking about how he loves food and pancakes. I've seen this before. You could say, yeah, I'd love to get a pancake. So now we got a pancake. The uh, dialogue can be quite um, humorous. There's some comedy thrown in there. And um, 
I like it. I like it. I want to see more of the story. I want to see more of the character interactions. And I definitely want to see where Kilta goes. So we're going to jump to a, a portion of the video where we just take a quick look at the history of the updates that the dev team has been has been doing, has been implementing. Because Kilta is an early access game. And I'm a little wary of early access games because I think we've all been burnt once or twice where we pick up a game, maybe more than once or twice, we pick up a game in early access and it just never gets updates. The devs kind of ghost everyone. Is that happening with Kilta? Let's take a look. Let's jump to the next part. All right, so here we are at the Kilta official announcements news page on Steam, which I highly recommend that everyone looks at when you're interested in buying a game, especially an early access game, because you can see when's the last update. Is the dev ghosting everyone? Is they res are they responding to concerns? Our last update was May 24th. It is now August 4th. So June, July, August. I'm horrible with this, with, with months and everything. So... What is that? Less than three months, right? That's like two months and about a week and a half, give or take. So the dev definitely didn't ghost to anyone. They're still they're still actively supporting the game, updating the game. They did a major update on May 24th and then a minor hotfix where they fixed something that I guess, you know, this, this update implemented a little bit of a bug and they were quick to uh, address that. Fix the bug in version where certain enemies would cause the battle to not start properly. Ooh, that's a big bug. And what did they do? They fixed that the same day that that bug was implemented. It's good stuff. I like seeing that. So they did a massive content update on May 24th. Boss fight, nine new enemies, new items, new quests. A lot of content has been added to the previous chapters as well to make each playthrough more unique and interesting. Yes, that's important. That's good. Replayability is amazing for roguelike games. Also, the music. By the way, I love the music. I love the music of Kilta. We're going to play a little bit of that music in the, in the last part of the video, in the background. I like doing that. Uh, balance. The goal of balancing changes has been to make the gameplay more strategic and interesting which has also led to difficulty raising overall from the last patch with more fearsome foes but also new tools to defeat them do you have what it takes to conquer chapter three let us know i love it love it and in addition to um patch notes we've also seen the dev respond to devs not just dev devs multiple respond this one was quite uh recent um there it is. Raising the replay value of the game is one of the main goals of version 1.0. Heck yeah. Version 1.0 is obviously going to be a release update, which is coming pretty soon, I imagine. It's it's approaching. I'm not sure if it's by the end of the year, but it's coming up because they're on, what, 0.9? I'm going to ask them about that. See uh, when, the, when the release is. But yeah, I like seeing that. Like when devs respond to, to posts like, hey, I have a concern or I have a question about the game before I buy it or my game's crashing. Can you help me? Love seeing that. Huge props for that. Let's move to our last portion. The pros, cons, and feedback, and final thoughts on Kilta. A unique style of gameplay. It is very difficult to find any game like this. I can only think of one, and we'll get to that. There's very little that plays like this. There's very little out there. We have our idlers that we just kind of leave running overnight and let them play themselves, and we have very little interaction on their outcome. There's no losing... You know, it's we've all played those. I think we, we've dabbled in them a little bit. This is different. This is it feels like you have more of a stake in it. You have more of a decision and your your decisions actually impact the outcome of your battle and determine your success or failure. I love it. Progression on future runs. It is a roguelike game uh, in that in the sense that you do get some progress and the game randomly rolls what you're going to see. You, you're you not going to see the same battles, the same loot, even the same characters in the same order as you would on subsequent runs. The character interactions and story are quite entertaining. There is... I had a, a couple of little little laughs while playing, and the story actually is, is pretty interesting to me. It's a guild that's, that's trying to make a name for themselves, trying to become the best. I've been there before. We've played MMOs. We my guild's the Orenthul. We uh, we strive to be the best we can be in MMOs and in whatever game we play together. So I could I could relate. I could relate to this story. I know what it's like. <laughs> Dialogue choices that impact the game, whether it's um, just impacting how the character reacts or actually giving you items. I like that. I like that you can make a choice that will determine whether or not you're going to get an awesome item or not. 
and I love the soundtrack, as you can hear in the background. Soundtrack's playing, and I, uh, I like it. I like the battle themes, I love the main theme. This is just at the menu, um, when you launch the game. Gets me, gets me amped up. Cons and feedback. Persistent progression seems a bit lacking. So I was talking about progression on future runs in the pros column. It's there, you can unlock some new, new abilities and such, but that's quite lacking to me. I would like to see items maybe locked behind future runs. Like, hey, you can now see these items in the game. You can now, even these new enemies are unlocked. Be, you know, beware. The, uh, you know, enemies grow stronger. There's new beasts on the, on, I don't know, in the field, whatever it may be. There's, there's rumors that, that, uh, a new beast is roaming the land, you know, causing havoc. And it's, it could be a new boss that you can come across now. And then, of course, there could be loot tied behind that boss that you now have access to. And and then beyond that, it could be just something like your guild actually progresses further. It could be plus one now all power is unlocked because you, you made it past chapter one. Something that shows the players gaining something for their uh, for their time in the game. Even if it ends in failure, they gain something. Like, oh, your total guild rank went up. You gained 100 guild experience, guild rank experience. You're almost guild rank 2. Oh, guild rank 2, okay, plus 1 all defense. You know, some, something along those lines to show that you're gaining something even if you don't succeed. Deeper character progression and customization. Um, when you recruit a character, you saw that there was two abilities to choose from. That's it. Beyond the uh, gear you equip on them, obviously, but that's it. It's all we have locked to that character. There's no class choice. There's no, oh, they love, they, they're gaining experience, they're leveling. There's nothing like that happening. And I would love to see some sort of system behind that. Some sort of system that, that entices players to help that character progress, to use that character a little bit more, and maybe even choose talents for the characters. Like, oh, they, are, they aren't a talent point. They have three trees to choose from. Where do you want to spend that talent point? Something deeper. That means my... We might have the same... Ten of us are playing the game. We're all using the same character. But there's ten different... Ten different builds for that character that people are playing. Like, it could just be... There's 15 possible talent choices. And he picked these three. And this guy picked these three. You know? Something to make them different. The formation system punishment... Seems a little odd. Seems a little odd that there's a pro-con to that. The way I would do it, the way I would adjust it to make it feel better would be instead of having that here's a stat buff and here's a here's a stat debuff, I would have enemies use more attacks that affect the formation. They affect the line both ways. Like there's there's more enemies that use the horizontal attacks that fit that attack the first row. And there's more enemies that have attacks that affect the columns. So if you want to get those buffs for having the first row filled. Just know that you might really want to look at those enemies' attacks. That might not be such a good idea, because they might be hitting the entire row quite often, which is a bad idea. You might choose to say, hey, you know what, let me put one guy behind the first row and two in the back columns, something like that. So you might not utilize the buff in these fights, because it might not be too wise to do so. And then you could, of course, nerf the buff a little bit if you wanted to say, hey, just 5% speed buff rather than 10% or something like that. Just so it doesn't feel like the player's getting punished when they're utilizing the formation system. It feels like a bad implementation of it, and people generally don't like seeing that. They'd rather see a 5% defense buff and no negative than a 10% debuff, I mean 10% defense buff and a negative effect. It just doesn't feel as good. I think players will will be more likely to utilize the system and feel less cheated if you don't have a negative effect. The UI needs some work. I crossed that out. Why did I cross that out? I still believe it needs work, but I found this. I was taking a look at the news, and back in April 29th, developer diary number three, work in progress. They actually had the same thought. I said, hey, they're working on the UI. They're making the the backgrounds a little more lively, so you feel like you're in a a workshop, a guild hall, or something of the sort. And we see on the left side here we have our our characters, and their stats are showing. Their stats are already showing, which is really cool. You can see it right from the UI, which was something that was kind of bothering me. You had to scroll over the character, and as an added bonus, added bonus, 
bonus, the backgrounds. They have a designer, Katarina Hoka. I hope I didn't butcher that. Um, one of their environment artists. She did um, some nice, nice backgrounds here. Another work from Katarina are these concept arts of Kiltis steps both at daylight and dawn. It's beautiful. I like it. Very nice. Anyway, let's go. Let's go back and wrap this up. Just kind of, kind of admiring that a little bit. All right, final thoughts. Kilta finds itself between genres, and I can only think of one game like it. With some attention to, to progression and customization systems, Kilta will easily shine in a nearly untouched genre. I am super excited to see what the future holds for Kilta. I can't wait to return for the next update. After all, we need to become the best guild in the Twin Continents. That was the opening scene, all right? Give me a break. I know it's a little cheesy, but it was the opening dialogue, all right? We need to become the best guild. And just to uh, do a final quick shout out, I gotta I gotta mention the other game because they actually turned me on the Kilta. They were really cool. They um on their Twitter they actually gave a shout out to Kilta because they fall within the same genre. That's Gladiator Guild Manager. They uh, here's the prologue of it. It's for free right now on Steam. Definitely go check it out. I usually don't even talk about other games like this during my reviews, but it seems like Kilta and Gladiator Guild Manager they're they're bros. They're bros in the game development world. So definitely check them out too. And and really uh, really thankful to those to those guys for turning me on the Kilta. Kilta is a uh, is a cool looking game, and I really do enjoy both of these games. Also, I did a video on Gladiator Guild Manager. Go find it on the channel. So guys, thank you very much for watching. I'll catch you in the next video. Throw us a sub, throw us a like, and I'll see you later. Skidat!